Hi and welcome to this episode of my world building podcast. Today's going to be a bit of a special episode because there's not going to be any world building in a strict sense in it. Instead, I want to devote this episode entirely on the fictional script and language that I have created for my fictional world. The name of the language is Imerile, which simply means the language of the Imeri people. When I went about creating the language, the thing most important to me was the script, because I wanted something that I could use for my maps that would give them a more authentic feel and make them seem like actual historical artifacts. And something that I really liked was the vertical scripts seen on Asian maps from China, Korea, etc. So I wanted to have a vertical script for my maps as well. Additionally, I needed, of course, some general idea on how the language would sound to provide names for different places, things, etc. So these were the original purposes of why I created the script and some very basic ideas around the language as a whole. And since I knew I wanted to have a vertical script, I started looking for some historical inspiration and I found the Sogdian alphabet, which fit the bill quite nicely because firstly it's vertical and I really like the aesthetic properties. It looks like very nice calligraphy. So I wanted to have something of that sort. And you probably haven't heard of the Sogdian alphabet because it's not in use anymore. But I suppose the most well-known contemporary successor of the script is the Mongolian script, which is still in use. I saw recently that the Mongolian government has a new website where they also use the language digitally. So I think it's well and alive. With these inspirations, I went about and created the script for New Imerile, which you can see here. And here we have the name Imerile, the name of the language written in the script of the language. From the name New Imerile, you can already conclude that there is an old version as well. And in fact, there's several older versions because I created several precursors for the language, most notably the scripts of Samele and of Old Imerile which you can see here. And as you can see, I never digitized them. These are just handwritten glyphs copied from my world building notes, but I thought it might be interesting to see them here. I most likely will not use them in my maps, perhaps in some artworks at some point, but so far I haven't and I might not. But I think the most important thing here is that I wanted to have some historical precursors because this strongly accentuates the point that the language is a socio-cultural artifact that has been created by a particular group of people at some point and there are several origins of it that have been created by different groups of people and I feel this strongly anchors the language itself in the world. So one thing I thought about so far beyond what I need for the script and the different naming convention etc is really um, how the language ties into the world building, how it is part of that fictional world. And I thought it might be interesting to just go through the history of that language briefly, because it ties nicely into the stories I've been telling about the different cultures so far. So let's start with the earliest predecessor, which is Samele, the language of the Same. And you can see the alphabet here. It's an alphabet that is not written vertically but horizontally and it was the alphabet of the script used by the old Same and they originally obtained some proto version of it from the Kushumeri and I've been talking about both of these cultures on the podcast so far and the Kushumeri were the ones to first devise a writing system from symbols that they would use as part of their rituals. So here we have the advent of writing as a technology and over time the writing system would be passed on in some version to the Samese, who would develop after a while their own version of of a writing script, which I think is quite different from the Kushumeri writing system. I haven't created any version of that, and I think I might not, because I like the idea that this is just lost in time, because the Samese of later day would retain some version of their own script in this would be passed on to later cultures that I will talk about in the future, among them the Imerise. So these would have the Same alphabet available to them, but not the Kushumeri alphabet because this would never have been used by the Samese. Now the Samese then ventured on to colonize different parts of the world where they also met the Bachaise, and those would not have a writing system of their own, so they would just simply adopt the Same writing system with the 
important distinction that they would apply it in a vertical fashion. And in this way, Imerile would be born, or rather the old version of the script, which you can see here. And the most interesting thing here is probably the transition from Samele to old Imerile. So as I said, the Bacchese would just simply take Samele and write it down in vertical fashion. And the result you can see here. So here we have different words written in Samele in vertical fashion. And as you can see, this works rather nicely for some words but quite poorly for others. So the idea is that the Bachai would slowly transform the script and adapt it to better use in vertical writing. And this is how the old script of Imerile would be born. And you can see here it's still very recognizable that it originated from Samele, but it certainly has a style of its own. And it is this old script of Imerile that would be finally used in the rising Imeri society which is a syncretism of the Samei and Bachai societies. And I've been talking about these historical developments in earlier episodes. So when Samese and Bachaise formed a shared culture, they would use this writing script at first. Over time, this script would be transformed yet again into a newer version just of the same script, which is mostly an aesthetic upgrade, if you will. And the reasons here are twofold. Firstly, I think between the old and the new script, there would be the advent of paper and calligraphy. So the script over time would change just based on this medium. And the other driver might be the influx of Samei refugees um, after the destruction of the old Samei homeland. And the Samei Se had much more of a intellectual culture, if you will. So I take it that they would have many intellectuals who would use writing in a more steady and regular fashion and would also pay great attention to the aesthetic of writing, etc. So after they would encounter the old Imerile script, they would yet again transform it to better fit their needs and preferences. So we have this back and forth generally between the two cultures that finally gives rise to new Imerile. And the result you can see here, this is the version that I finally went on to digitize and use in my maps. And here we see it in action yet again with Imerile. As you can see, there are two versions for every letter of the alphabet, and that's because every letter will look different if it appears at the end of a word, such as the A here in this case. On the other hand, at the beginning of the word, we have a space for interpunctation, so we can have different symbols to indicate the mode of the sentence that follows if it starts a new sentence, as there's also this dot on the right, which I just use if the word appears in the middle of a sentence. Okay, so so much for a quick introduction of the script. I also came up with a few very premature and tentative ideas about the language itself. Firstly, as for the nouns, I went with a romantic language type of declension, which distinguishes between masculine, feminine, and neuter, and there's a shared plural for each of them, and this gives rise to words such as uh, pelai or pelaisi. But perhaps the most interesting feature of the language itself is the use of prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes can be used, for instance, to indicate the subject of a sentence. So there's a range of prefixes for different pronouns, uh, one for me, one for you, he, she, it, we, and they, uh, in order of appearance here from left to right. And for verbs, there are temporal prefixes. Here for presence, for a past completed event, for a past ongoing event, for a future certain event, and for a future likely event. And these two forms of prefixes can be combined. So for instance, here we have amewa, which combines the prefix for we with the prefix for presence. So it indicates the mode of the verb that follows. I've also defined a number of suffixes that are used at the end of each word. And these will be familiar for you if you have listened to the episode so far, because you have heard them again and again. And the reason is that they indicate different peoples. For instance, you have heard me speaking of the Imeri Se, for instance, and that is because the Se suffix indicates a group of people. Likewise, the Ne suffix indicates a certain location, an area where those people live. The Le suffix indicates a language that they use. Tawe indicates an ocean. And then we have these two special suffixes, Dara, which means empire, and, and this will appear in later episodes because it hasn't been used by any of the cultures I've been talking about 
so far. And then we have the lie suffix, which I talked about already because the appropriate use of this suffix provoked a war between the Bachai and the Emeri, and it also gives rise to the word Pelai. Alright, so these are just some very preliminary ideas on the grammar. I'm not sure if I will deepen them in any sense, but I also came up with some ideas about the phonetics of the language, and the most interesting way to present that is, I think, to just read an excerpt written in the language and Actually, I've already created one which you have been seeing over and over again if you have listened to the episodes of this podcast because I use it in my episode cover. This is not only a graphic design device, but it is also a foreword written to the historical atlas that I'm creating as part of these episodes. So here I've just copied that and reorganized that to isolate every sentence in use. And I will now give you a brief demonstration of the language and go through these different sentences step by step. And I will give you for each sentence a Latinization as well as an English translation. Apelase mera chemte isu, kelethea meshakatos me with feminin isu. Afayale, afunishale, ame haurewe chiwe femel la chene. Menu hechira soma kopathali simine, chira isira mentune iti sincia te meshari thim faishu thim. Uchao se amenesi wi echuile chua hetu amera. Ame fe chuila tuni ton kalathi amenemise. Fachure ame wasu iwa reige chine kothuli ulethein. Chithi minesos la mefim keleneisi fa bahori mu paneisi. Chibe menuarate tanepeisi namese. Reige chithi minyeni atesi wi isu.